Hey guys, what's going on? T and I went to go see The Man from UNCLE last night. T, what did we think about it? Well, here's the thing. We were walking out of the theater mm. and Clint said something and he literally read my mind. Clint, what did you say? I said, this movie is not as fun as it wants to be. Bingo. I think the last screening we went to together happened to be Mission Impossible right. 17 or whatever it is. Super fun. Uh -huh. Loved it. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised by right. how good it was. This one, I was kind of expecting that same level of whimsy and fun and like fun espionage spies just yeah. kind of getting, you know, mixing it up, cutting it up with each other. Being sexy in the mid-century. Yeah, none of that. It was no. it was quite dull and slow and it wanted to be fun and it just isn't. I, I, don't, I don't think it would be accurate to say that the movie is not as fun as it thinks it is. It's not making a big show out of how fun it is and it's like, right. guys, you're not, you're not real fun. And it's not really something where you can put your finger on one overarching problem with the film. It's sort of an accumulation of yeah. missed opportunities. It's a Guy Ritchie film uh, based on a TV series from, from back in the day of the same right. name, Man From U.N.C.L.E. Cold War, spies doing fun spy stuff. For all intents and purposes, it ought to be the odd couple but spies, right? right? because it's a Russian spy and an American spy that have to work together during the Cold War. And they and don't they work, like it. They don't like it one bit because they do things differently, mm -hmm. which when you say it like that, I'm in. And yeah. that's why I was excited about this movie. And I wouldn't say that I had high hopes for the movie. I wanted the movie to just be easy fun. I didn't want this movie to be weighty at all. Right. I didn't want it to have stakes. I didn't want it to have a particularly compelling story. Right. I wanted broad, sexy Cold War spies doing broad, sexy, fun things against broad, insane villains. Henry Cavill playing the American spy and Army Hammer playing the Russian spy. Now, his Russian accent is, you know, an American guy goes, it's, it's, trying it's, to do a Russian it's all right. accent. It's I mean, not the I wouldn't part. say he's as bad as like, we must get moose and squirrel. Right. If you don't know what that is, you're too young. Henry Cavill just sounds like he's doing a news broadcast. He sounds like he's reading the news the entire time. He stays right here. The entire movie. That's spot on. <clears throat> Alicia Vikander, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but she's actually in one of my favorite movies of the year thus far, Ex Machina. Yeah. She works pretty hard in this. I think she really tries to like bring her A game, but she can't save it. The super villain, she does a fine job, but she's very much the standard yeah. super villain that you get. She kind of looked like Paris Hilton, which kind of made the movie work even better for me on a private level, but <laughs> I don't really think that's something that they were actually going for. She was honestly my favorite part of the movie. She yeah, was the, good. She was the part of the movie that delivered on what I wanted the movie to be. But no, no one else does. Right. I will say one of the interesting things about this movie is it's an interesting movie to watch in terms of how, uh, how people go about fixing a movie. I think this movie came in really boring, really long, and so they were like, how can we zhuzh this up? Big time. And one of the clues that you can always look for, if there are visual elements in the movie, this, this visual style that gets thrust into the movie that doesn't have any context in the narrative, mm -hmm. uh, that's them trying to zhuzh up a boring movie. There's a scene in this movie where they're walking through a warehouse not finding anything, and that's the point of the scene. Mm -hmm. They walk through a warehouse, there's nothing here. But they do like this Ocean's Eleven split screen. So you can tell that the scene was playing boring, it was playing slow, so they're like, how can we move it along here? Give me some Ocean's Eleven split screen stuff. Not only does it not really do that, it's just, it's polishing a turd, but it works against the point of the scene. Mm -hmm. If the scene is them like walking around a warehouse not finding anything, there's a way to play that scene to where it works and where it's fun. To actually enhance the humor of them not yeah. finding something. Instead, they went the other way and they were like, just make it make it snappier. Now, there are a couple of scenes. There's a scene early in the movie where they're looking at a slideshow and the transitions in that scene, like, you know, we go from one scene to the next and it sort of moves like an old fashioned slide projector. And like, that's something that was clearly conceived of and executed in a way that was interesting. Uh, but then there's all these other scenes that, there's some scenes where they do some weird nonlinear editing to yeah. reveal things. But that's also kind of a Guy Ritchie it's signature. It's a very Guy Ritchie signature. He loves to kind of do the instant replay and here's the part you didn't see. Yeah, but they're doing it, the way that they were doing it, it was in such close well, quarters. Yeah, it's, like it 30 just seconds later, they confusing. say. Confusing. Yeah, it's, You're it's just like, wait, weird. is this a mistake? So it's very odd. It was. It, it's interesting to watch as an exercise in like how to spot a zhuzhed movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think overall, it's a question of whether Guy Ritchie phoned this one in, or if for some reason the studio was meddling too much with this property, which, you know, even though he's a very well-established yeah. director, maybe it was just that this is a new property that they're hoping to franchise, and they're like, don't f*** this up, and they were maybe just, 
getting in there a little too much? I, I can't really tell. Maybe, yeah, and that's the other thing. It's hard to tell because it's also not, it's, it's evident that it wasn't supposed to be sort of a, a dry, slow plotting movie. Uh, and then they decided to go the other way and make mm -hmm. it quick and snappy and fun. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just, oh, you should have been good. Just there, it's just, it's just there, it happened, and now we get to move on with our lives. Yeah. Okay, well, let us know what you think of Man From U.N.C.L.E. if you've seen it. Uh, if not, how are you, are you gonna go see it? What do you think about movies that get judged all up in post? Click like and subscribe and stick around for more Cinefix stuff all over Cinefix. More like the Bone Ranger. Yeah. Mm. More like jizzed it up. Uh, <laughs> both, of <those> <laughs> both of those things work so well. <laughs>